it's important to speak about this uh, photoelectric effect in order to understand the quantum nature of matter because this is the the experiment that we were just talking about earlier that uh, ended up telling us that light must act sometimes like a particle. So I'm going to explain a little bit more about photoelectric effect and try to uh, explain some of the details of it. So again, just to make it clear what photoelectric effect is, this is when we have some sort of uh, metal. Lots of different materials can be used for this, but uh, here we basically we have uh, photons that are coming in. In other words, light is coming in, hitting this metal, and under certain conditions, which we're going to talk about in a second, you can actually have uh, electrons that are emitted. So maybe uh, coming out here we have little electron. Okay, so photons come in, they hit this metal, and some electrons are sometimes kicked off. Now this idea behind a photoelectric effect, some very strange things ended up happening, some things that scientists didn't expect. And uh, it turns out, although Albert Einstein was extremely intelligent and uh, he, of course, wrote lots of interesting papers uh, like about uh, special relativity and general relativity, it turns out the thing that he was uh, awarded the Nobel Prize for was just for explaining photoelectric effect. So that's actually what he got his uh, Nobel Prize for. I want to explain a little bit about what photoelectric effect actually did and what was the curious part about it, because, of course, explaining this, no problem, it bounces and things come up. But some curious things happen. Um, in order to make this quicker, I just wanted to type this out. So it turns out that below a certain, certain threshold frequency, uh, which we label F0, no electrons are emitted. So these, these, by the way, are going to be the three main things to remember. So for a student, uh, you should definitely know these three things here for photoelectric effect. So what do I mean by threshold frequency? Well, that just means that if we're looking at, uh, you know, the amount of... Uh, photoelectrons that are actually being uh, emitted. If we have the frequency of light right here on the x-axis, let's just say, and up here maybe we count, you know, like the number of, uh, or actually let's do the energy. So the energy of the electrons that are kicked out, it turns out that, it goes like this, the graph. Oops, I'm trying to actually draw it uh, nicely here and I did a really lousy job of uh, drawing that. Let me just try it again. So here we want to try to draw some sort of straight line here. So what this means is that below a certain value of frequency, by the way, F is going to be measured in hertz, energy can be measured in, let's say, joules. Uh, it could also be electron volts, which I'll be talking about in a second here. But it turns out that below a certain frequency of light, uh, nothing will happen. So in other words, if your frequency, let's say, is down here below some magical you know, threshold frequency here, uh, nothing happens. No electrons get kicked out. Okay, so this is our little F0. I'm just going to make the pen size the same here for everything. So this is our threshold frequency right here. That's that one right there. Now, uh, just to explain a little bit about frequency and energy and things like this, uh, it is important to understand what do I mean by frequency. Um, it turns out, let's see here. You can talk about frequency and speed of light or of a wave by this wave equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that from our trusty equation booklet. Uh, so this is your friend, the data booklet. Uh, you should definitely know this very well. You should learn um, where everything is on this data booklet because this is the only thing you're allowed to use on an exam. So students, I highly, highly recommend that you know what all these different letters mean. Maybe even take a look, look at this here. They even tell you about Terra and Giga. They even tell you about radiance and kilowatt hours, all sorts of nice stuff here. But turns out if we go a little bit further when we talk about uh, waves, let's see here. Here we go, waves. Under topic four, which is a standard level, but uh, for higher levels, you also have to do it. V equals F lambda. This equation right here, that's the important one. So I'm gonna write that down. So V equals F lambda. Remember now, F is the frequency of light, and that's measured in hertz. Lambda is the wavelength of light. Okay, so that's measured uh, in meters. This right here is measured in hertz, which by the way is seconds to the minus one. Uh, that was actually very, very lousily written. Hold on a second here. So this is actually seconds to the minus one. And this of course is a speed which is measured in meters per second. Now, if we're talking about light, though, we can replace V, the speed of any wave or anything in our wave equation. This works for anything we're looking at, so water or anything else, or sound waves. 
But in our case, if we're looking at light, we can replace V with C. So we can say C equals F lambda. The reason I'm showing you this is just because uh, it's really important to understand that if you're talking about frequency, you can also talk about wavelength. They're, uh, they're very similar in the way. All you have to do is just use this equation, so C equals F lambda, in order to switch between lambda and frequency. In other words, wavelength and frequency. And uh, also, we can talk about uh, energy. If we talk about the units of energy, um, E, which is normally in joules, but it turns out it's also measured in electron volts. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. But uh, it turns out this seems like a really silly unit of energy. And it turns out in particle physics it comes in really handy, and also in nuclear physics. So it turns out an electron volt is really important. And what it is, is this is the energy given to an electron. Okay, this is, the, this is how much energy an electron has if it's been accelerated by some potential difference, so some voltage. So let's just say I've uh, got an electron, you know, between, uh, let's say, a positive charge plate and a negative charge plate. And this electron, of course, if it's a little uh, negative charge, if I start it off over here, it's going to go flying toward this way. It turns out it's going to accelerate. Now, how much energy does it get? It turns out that's equal to E times V. Now, what's E and what's V? Well, I'm going to get you a little equation again from your trusty equation sheet. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about what E is. So if I go, uh, not the first page, but the second page, little E right here, that's the elementary charge. So that's the charge of an electron. Okay, so E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the unit of charge. And it turns out, uh, if I search around, you have another equation for electricity. Ah, here's one. So under topic five, electric circuits, um, or electric currents, this is an equation here that a lot of students forget to use. I think a lot of students sort of jump right away to these other equations. This one's extremely important. VE equals half MV squared. This tells you, I don't know if you recognize, half MV squared should hopefully be ringing bells. This is kinetic energy. So it turns out if you have an electron, and in this case, like my little electron, it's been accelerated across two plates. That electron, when it's you know done being accelerated, will have a kinetic energy EV, which is the same thing as a half mv squared, according to my equation booklet here. So VE is going to be half mv squared. So this tells me the energy of my electron. Now how can we actually convert this? Well, it turns out uh, we can convert from joules to electron volts really easily. What 1 EV is, is just 1 times e, which if you remember from your equation booklet that I just showed, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. It's supposed to be a minus here. And all that times one volt. So if it turns out, if I accelerate it, you know, one electron across one volt, that's what one electron volt is. So it's actually a really cleverly named unit of energy. One electron volt is just one electron's charge times one volt. And it turns out if you multiply 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times 1 volt, you end up with, well, it's just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So 1 electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. I just better make this in here a little bit clearer. There we go. So that's what 1 electron volt is. So we can talk about, uh, now back to photoelectric effect here. So below a certain, a certain threshold frequency, so below some sort of frequency of light here, no electrons at all are emitted. Now above this frequency, the maximum uh, kinetic energy depends on a frequency, and that's why I drew energy here. So it turns out the bigger the frequency, the bigger the energy. So yes, you go up in frequency, you go up in energy. Now it turns out the number of electrons that are actually kicked out depend on the intensity of the light. They do not depend on the frequency. That was another really strange thing. So it turns out Einstein came along to explain this. Okay, now it's really important to uh, understand that um, this one here, why light as a wave can't explain photoelectric effect. And it turns out that it can't because um, if light was a wave, we'd expect that light of any frequency um, should make Uh, photoelectrons. Okay, so that's really important. 